Hello everybody, welcome to Liam's Library. First things first, uh, with this review, I'm going to let you know about this competition we're going to be having. I woke up this morning and found out that I have 91 subscribers on my YouTube channel, which made me very excited, made me very happy. My goal is to have thousands upon thousands and keep bringing you my fantastic content. But um, getting back to the competition, I've decided when I get to 100 subscribers, <coughs> excuse me, on my channel, I am going to read one of these books and give you one of the best reviews I've ever done, right? So starting off, Stephen King's The Running Man. He originally published that as Richard Bachman. There is a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, but I will do a book to film review on The Running Man. Or if you decide you don't want The Running Man and you would rather some more demonic shit, Ira Levine or Ira Levin, Rosemary's Baby. I will read this for you. I've read all these books, but I'll read them for you fresh and review it fresh. I'm not going to so much do the movies. I'll be doing the books. I'm going to read it in one sitting for you. So Ira, Ira Levin, Rosemary's Baby, or number three, The Howling by Gary Brandner. Now, I've read this before. I've, like I said, I've read them all before. I read this more recently. The Howling's a cool book. It's also a cool movie. They're all movies, they're all books, but I have the book versions here for you. So when you vote, vote for one of these three, and then my next review will be, I will sit down and do and read them in one sitting and give you an awesome review, right? An awesome one. Promise. So that's that for Liam's Library. Let's get on to today's review. And today's review is a corker. Today's review is a great one. I'm sorry about the, the lighting. My room's a bit fucked up for lighting right now. But let's continue on with Night Shift. Let's please continue on with Night Shift. Um, trucks. Now, I'm reviewing trucks, okay? I've been doing these short stories, um, and I've been talking to you about all these short stories in Night Shift. Trucks is where we hit this professional mark. Now, I'm not saying the other stories aren't great. They are. I mean, you heard my opinion on the Mangler and the Boogeyman, and sometimes they come back, all that stuff, right? There's something about trucks, okay? From the first sentence, there's something about this story. There's, there's barely, there's, ne there's very nearly not one sentence wrong. Like, the entire short story is nearly flawless. Um, you know, demons and bullshit and, and blobs and monsters and vampires, whatever. Trucks, even though it's about trucks that drive themselves around and kill people, there's, it's, it's written so professionally, so brilliant, so fucking wonderful. It's one of the, it's, it's probably the second best story in here. Not personal favourite of mine, but just the best written. There's an introduction at the start of this book, Night Shift, by John D. MacDonald, my favourite author of all time, rest in peace. And he happens to mention the story Trucks and the story The Last Rung on the Ladder. Now, The Last Rung on the Ladder, John D. MacDonald happens to say that he thinks there's nearly a sentence wrong with that story. Trucks, I think, is the same. They're the only two. You know, you'll find little mistakes. You'll find a bit of over-exaggeration. You'll find a bit of a few holes in the stories here and there. It's his first short story collection, but you won't find that in Trucks, and you won't find it in the last run on the ladder. So Trucks, it starts off at a truck stop. And these people, you know, like a truck stop. So there's like diners, there's booths, there's, you know, a, a, a chef, and and there's a whole bunch of petrol bowsers um, with diesel, gas, and petrol. Um... <laughs> but there's all these trucks just doing all these bog laps around this fucking diner and no one's driving them and they're running people over and all these people stuck in this truck stop briefly tell each other how they got there. Um, just little stories like they were driving up Highway 51 and this fucking truck was just coming up, knocking cars off left and right. So they pulled into this place. Turns out to be a truck stop. Probably not the best place to be. When it turns out it's the end of the world and trucks are taking over and killing everyone. Now, there is a movie version. I am not here to talk about Maximum Overdrive. When I do a, when I do the review on the movie version of Trucks, it's called Maximum Overdrive. It's written and directed by Stephen King. The only time he ever did it, I'll make that a big review all on its own. Just to let you know, there is a movie based on Trucks. It's directed by the King himself, starring Emilio Estevez, and it's fucking great fun. Um, it's not this story. It is, but it's not. So this story is written, even though it's quite absurd, it's written in a really sort of suspenseful, um, sad way. 
they're not getting out of there. Anyway, so these trucks are driving themselves. And eventually, the counter chef, or the counterman, or the chef, one of them, one of the guys trapped at this truck stop, decides all they have to do is run out of fuel. When these things stop driving themselves around, they'll run out of fuel, and then fucking what? They can't hurt us then. Then, pretty much as this guy says this to our main character, it's told from the point of view of just some guy in the truck stop. Um... As soon as he's told that, like, yeah, all they're going to do is run out of fuel, all of a sudden this big horn starts bleeping, and it's Morse code. And this kid who's in there, this young kid, when he was younger, he was in the Boy Scouts, he learned Morse code, and he's like, holy shit, that's Morse code. So he sits down, and he starts writing out what this thing's saying, and it's saying, this truck is saying, attention, attention, someone must pump fuel. This person will not be hurt, um, and must pump fuel now. So, like, whatever's taken over these trucks, whether it be, like, some kind of science fiction thing or they've just grown, um, I don't think they've grown sentience, like, um, or evolved or anything. It's, like, it's it's more science fiction even though there's no explanation, which I do like a Stephen King story with no explanation. Um, yeah, so they realise they have to start uh, pumping fuel for these trucks. But first off, they're like, fuck that. I'm not going to be a slave to these assholes every time one of them needs an oil filter change. What, they're going to beep at me and I'm going to fucking hop to? No way, man. So they don't do anything about it, and they sort of start to try to do their own missions and work out how they're going to survive, and then this big fucking, um, like, caterpillar, like, big fucking um, bulldozer smashes in half of the truck stop, and they're like, all right, all right, enough carnage. Well, after they blow up the bulldozer, they're like, the beeping starts again, so they're like, all right, we better pump. So the main guy goes out there and just starts pumping fuel. And he's pumping fuel for hours. And he pumps one island completely empty. Moves on to the next island completely empty. His blisters are popping. His headache from all the fumes is just fucking ridiculous. And then uh, he's out of fuel. So he's like, sorry guys, it's all over. And then this big silver truck backs up. And it's full of fuel, of course. And he gets to keep pumping, keep pumping. He happens to look up the road. And he sees trucks stretching into the distance for miles and miles with the haze of their... You know, everything that's spewing out of their carburetors just filling the air, and he can see it all over the world. He can see that this is probably what it's like everywhere right now. People are either lying dead, run over with truck tyres, or they're pumping fuel until they drop. And so he's about to pass out pumping so much fuel, and someone taps him on the shoulder and says, listen, go lie down, I'll take over. And it's the counterman or the chef or whatever. And so our main character goes inside and lies down, and it ends with him sort of looking out the window as the counterman is fueling up. He's been out there for five hours. And the guy's like, shit, I'm going to have to wake up that girl in a minute. She's going to have to help us pump fuel. We can't do this on our own. Um, and then I guess we'll think of something. But he can't see any hope. And he looks out the window and in the distance, in the horizon, he sees these two jet planes um, flying in the sky with these two jet trails coming out behind them. And he wishes he could believe there was people in them. The end. So there's probably not even anyone flying the planes. You know what I mean? So it's like things are getting worse. Technology is being taken over. It never explains what. And it ends right there. And I'm not going to discuss the movie again, but I'm going to just finish off on the story there. So it's probably the second best well-written story in Night Shift is Trucks. It's just written so well. It leaves you hanging. It's it's what a short story should be. And so I'm just going to leave it at that. Please like and subscribe to my channel. As soon as I get to 100, like I promised, I'll do one of these three books, okay? Um, and then when you vote, I'll pick one, and I'll do it in one sitting, and I'll give you one of the greatest reviews of all time. Anyway, look after one another, read some great books, watch some even better fucking movies, and take care of one another forever. Bye.